This is Diane Williams and welcome to The Crafty View. I'm here to talk about some of the craftspeople that are out here demonstrating today. So today I'll be interviewing, let's see, we'll go around and see who's here and what they're doing and learn all about their work. I'm here with Dana Finnamore. And she has been a member of the Guild since last year. She found a way to do this during a pandemic. But I'm sure she didn't just start in 2021. But we're going to find out what it is she does and how she does it. Here are some of her designs. You notice that they have that lush earthiness about the colors. Makes me think of the Gulf Coast for some reason. But Dana is a potter. And here is her contact information. But let's talk to, oh, and this is her color. I think with these, greet with her business cards, this color, that tells me this is her favorite color. <laughs> Dana, how are you? I'm good, how about you? I'm good, so yeah. you, you ventured out in 2021 and became a member of the Guild. I did. But how long have you been doing pottery? Um, probably, I will say five years. Okay. Five years. Yeah, what got you started? Um, my um, educational background is in studio art, so I kind of do a lot of different things, but I really love clay, and I love ceramics, and I love sculpture, and so um, the medium allows me to um, kind of stretch uh, my wings in, in a lot of different uh, and go in a lot of different directions with it. Yes. Um, this is a slab sculpture that I'm creating. So you hand build? Um, I throw in a hand build. Okay. Um, this happens to be, this what I'm working on is going to turn out like this. This lady is going to be a planter. Uh, both of these uh, pieces are hand uh, built from slabs. Uh, these are terracotta. Um, and so this, is, this sculpture here is hollow. Um, and it's just terracotta, and then I um, brush some white slip on it to give it a little bit of a contrast there. That's a very interesting piece. Thank you. Yes, I love, you know, what you've done with that. And then this is the back of it. Bert. And I guess she's kind of a forest fairy, nymph, whatever, you know? Yes. Um, my students, I teach at Northwest Mississippi Community College in the art department there, and they wanted me to give her pointy ears. Oh. And so I felt like with the pointy ears that she needed a bird on her shoulder. I so. agree. <laughs> Very thoughtfully done. And so this piece you've... So it looks like there were two pieces there that you put together. Well, actually, it's a slab that I rolled out. Okay. Um, and then I cut it. And then um, I just, uh, these are just lines to, to mark where, uh, so I know where placement is, um, the center of the, of the um, face, the eyes, um, the ear, where I need to attach the ear the temple area and things like oh, that. Oh, I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and then I will just go in and tweak it and add um, brows and eyes and the lips and everything like that. And then um, for the hair, I just kind of like piece some uh, pieces of clay on there so that I don't want it to look like strands of hair. I just okay. want to give the indication of hair or what have you. I think it looks a lot better that way. Now, do you use a certain type of clay? Um, well, this is stoneware here. This is just what I had. Mm -hmm. And then um, this is terracotta for But I would normally make the planters, um, especially if I'm going to have a plant in them, um, out of terracotta. So they can live, they can stay outside and that sort of thing. Okay. This could as well, but um, I think um, if I'm not going to um, glaze fire, I'm just going to use the terracotta. Mm -hmm. Now, the planters that I'm looking at over here, do they also go in the kiln? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, these pieces are glazed. Um, this is all stoneware as well. Some of it's thrown on the wheel and some of it's slab built. Now, what can I use this piece for? There's That's a multiple. Soap dish. Oh, soap dish. Yeah, you can use it as a soap dish. You can put jewelry on it, uh, just a catch-all type of thing. Nice. 
Now, how do you get these multicolored, you know, like, it almost looks like you painted. I did. These you, are brush-on glazes. Okay. This one here, um, it has a pattern that I rolled out. I cut it from, um, actually, this piece. This is my little, and you see how much it shrinks. Yes. It shrinks quite a bit. Um, and so then I would brush on, after it's bisque-fired, I'd brush on glaze. Um, and then maybe brush on two different glazes to kind of give it that um, effect of having, you know, the, the color there. Yes. So. Do you put your signatures on your, your signature on your work? I just put a That's little, your little, symbol. My little symbol. Okay, and my nice. symbol's also on my back. Oh. <laughs> Turn around, let me see that again. Let me get a close-up of that. Cool beans. Yes, thank you. Now this one has a different kind of finish on it. Right, it this is a honeycomb. And um, this is um, just some olive leaves. And I'll show you the, the uh, pickup. Here's my texture sheet, it's quite dirty, so. <laughs> Oh. But you can see here. Yes. And so it's um, extraordinary to see this and then, then see this. It really is. You gotta love clay, right? You gotta love clay. Right. And I see you've got tools and f now butane fuel. What you doing with that, girl? Well, um, what I do with this is when I need my sculpture to firm up a little bit. Then I'll just kind of heat it a little bit so that it gets a little bit firm so that I don't have to worry about it slumping over or anything like that. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Nice. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, thank you so much. Thank I got your information you. on your card here to share with people. Thank you. And what part of the state are you located in? Are you, um, I'm in Senatobia, Mississippi. Okay. Up, up near Memphis. Oh. Well, you got well, 35 your... miles from Memphis, we'll say. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Dana. Thank you. Much appreciated. Thank you so much. Mm hmm